We can't rewrite history, but we can correct some of the evils of history. And the number one tool that we have is education. The goal is to tell the story of slavery. What slavery was about, what did it mean to be a slave? Why Africans? Why black people? Maybe more importantly, what are the legacies of slavery? It may be that you're not forgetting because you never knew. Because of a conscious elimination from history, these most unpleasant facts. About 60% of the people who were enslaved here and who came from Africa were from my area, from Senegambia. If you go 200 years back, if I were here on this plantation, I would be nothing but a slave. I would be a negre de nation polar on this plantation, and I would be working like a horse or a donkey. This plantation is involved in certain histories that are not very pleasant. In Germany today, there are hundreds of memorials and museums dedicated to the Holocaust. And the Germans are not proud of that history. But they have studied it, they have embraced it, and they own it. We have not done that in America. I was born in New Orleans under rigid segregation, Jim Crow laws. We had to sit in the back of the bus behind the screen. We had protests, we had sit-ins, we had court cases. It took us a long time to recognize former slaves and their descendants as equals. I heard about John purchasing the Whitney Plantation. I had no idea he wanted it to be a museum. The plantation homes along the river road are part of a tour, and they show the white way of life, you know, the grand ballroom, the, the sit parlors, and how they lived, never addressing how the slaves made that possible. They were wealthy because they worked Slaves like animals. I grew up in a segregated city. I started practicing law. And I happened to be a man who was lucky in his profession and had made many millions of dollars. I thought it was time to get involved in something that could have an impact. One woman said, how is it that a rich white boy is involved in all this slave mess? And I said, well, I understand your reservations and I understand your suspicion, but I want you to remember there was a whole bunch of rich white boys who started this mess. And so you shouldn't be surprised if one's trying to do something about it. I may be responsible for bricks and mortar, the man who's on the academic side is Dr. Ibrahim Sek from Dakar, Senegal. Dr. Sek knows more about the Atlantic slave trade than anyone else I know of. It is very hard to link every person who was enslaved here in the South to the African origins. All the other People like the Irish, the Italian, the Germans, they can trace their ancestry. Everything was done to erase the past. We have some documents in New Orleans, like the notarial archives, most of them in French. They borrow money from the banks. That's where we get most of the information. 
This was the largest slave auction area in the United States, right here. There were 110 slave auction houses. I didn't know that. I'll bet you the 1% of my city still doesn't know that. Once they bought the slaves, you know, they went to the notary, they take the people and then send them upriver to the Whitney Plantation. This was an indigo farm. Indigo, the king of dyes in the 18th century, was the crop you needed to grow in order to be wealthy. The birth of the sugar industry, which was really demanding in labor, literally transformed the economy and also the conditions in which these people worked. The death rates were really high. Children were slaves on a plantation. They grew up learning to be slaves and serving their little masters. The little masters growing to be big master. The industry to the north profited from slavery. The people in the south profited from slavery. So slavery was everywhere. Slave labor was one of the pillars of the economy of this country. When I started doing the research, I was looking for the one who started this plantation. And then uh, I found him, Ambrose Heidel, the ancestor of all the Heidels of Louisiana. He came here in 1721. My ancestor that we traced, Anna, was an African slave who lived in the Heidel home. She was impregnated by the brother of the mistress of the house. Their child was Victor, and that is my great-grandfather who was born a slave Victor Heidel is the ancestor of all the black Heidels of Louisiana. I went into the archives in order to, in order to see who was Anna. I went to see who was Victor, and it made a, a wonderful story. Victor Heidel raised 10 kids. None of them knew how to read and write, but the next generation did better, and the next generation did even better, and finally, this family was able to control politics in New Orleans. In 1978, Ernest Morial became the first mayor of New Orleans. And who was the first lady? Sibyl Heidel. Sibyl Heidel was the great, great, the great granddaughter of Victor Heidel. And the son of Sibyl Heidel, Mark Morial, also became the mayor of New Orleans. But you know, not all African Americans can claim that uh, kind of, uh, uh, let's say, history, that kind of destiny. When I think that my great-grandfather was valued at $800, I mean, that, that's heartbreaking, that you could be bought and sold like that. The plantation itself has raised contradictory feelings and attitudes. The very ugly life of slaves provokes the guilt in white people, but also shame in black people. That guilt, it is not the goal over here. Even if your father, your ancestor was a slave owner, you never owned slaves. But we all need to understand the legacies of slavery. We need to understand why we have problems today. When they were slaves, they were not allowed to read and write. They could not own property. After the Civil War, they just opened the gates and say, you're free. Then what is freedom? Freedom has to go with civil rights. It's sad that more than 100 years later, you know, we are retrogressing. There's still brutality 
uh, that goes on that we can't seem to break that cycle. I think it's important that we understand the past because then we understand how attitudes have developed because of the past. I think it raises the consciousness. It raises the conversation. Since we started this project, things are moving here in Louisiana, things are moving in the United States in terms of work of memory. And whenever I go near that wall where we have the names of all the people who were enslaved here, I always think of myself. This plantation is sacred ground, I can feel it. I'm really proud to be the one doing it today. And I think if that people have ears, they can hear me now. And, uh, and I think they must be very proud of it too. To see one of them uh, sit here today and tell their story, bring them back to life, I think that was something worth doing. <laughs>